Welcome to the Bumblecast. I'm your host, Ian Flynn, the Bumble King, and joining me as always is my Bumble co-host, Kyle, JCRB Krause. Hey guys, it's me, Kyle. I'm here. Hey, it's time for more Bumblecast. It's Friday. We got our, yeah, which means we got our standard questions. Where do they come from this time, sir? Well, the first half of the episode, you're going to be hearing ones from our Discord server in the uh, Ask Questions uh, channel over there. And then at the uh, last half of the episode, you will be getting questions from Twitter. So we're going to go ahead and jump right on in, starting off with some questions from Discord. This one goes way back, and it's from Tick Tick. Will we ever find out how Sonic and Tails saw the name for Hydro City written down but never heard it spoken? Are act title cards a canonical thing in IDW, or did they see the name somewhere else? Where? Tick Tick, sometimes a man makes a joke without thinking it all the way through. And we all enjoy the joke, we all have a laugh, and then we choose collectively not to think too hard about it and make that man look like an idiot months after the fact. So... These are one of these moments where I think we should all just say, ha ha, that was a funny exchange on that page and just smile and nod and continue forward without ever looking back with any degree of scrutiny, please. (laughs) Well, now people are going to be looking at with even more scrutiny or maybe there's just a road (sighs) sign, you know, it's like, oh yeah, Hydro City, one mile. There it is it's there you never saw it but it's there well they only would have ever heard it from knuckles because he's the only native there well he put a sign up you know it's good he's, maybe he doesn't even know what it's called he he calls it something different every time because he isn't sure himself and he's just covering all the bases <laughs> well someone's going to snip this whole thing out of context and make it sound like you don't want any criticism at all so whatever it's fine if you can manage to edit it to sound like that more power to you well, you can. <laughs> All I need is one little clip. Uh, but then again, that's true of every episode, I think. You can find something that in every episode that makes us sound like just completely awful people. And that's, just, just, by, and and that's just by listening to it normally. <laughs> Here's a question from Anonymous. If Sonic was able to swim, how would he swim? I ask as a former swimmer. Uh, we've seen him swim in a few things. In Sonic Jam, I believe he did like a breaststroke. In Sonic Colors, wow. he just jumped constantly. Yeah, and Sonic, oh my god, I love that so much. I know. <laughs> just whoop, 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 out of the water. No fear. And it was fun, too. It was so free and liberating. And then Feels the like Olympic cheating. Games, uh, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. I will cheat not to listen to that drowning music. <laughs> and then the Olympic Games, they put him in the Life Fest, which is hilarious. And that is very funny. Like a, <laughs> kind of a kicky feet breaststroke type of thing i think so yeah we have seen him swim it's inconsistent and we don't see a lot of it but we have seen it happen yeah i think he would just swim like a real hedgehog which is to say just flail his feet really fast well it works for him on land yes it does and on water and in water actually they're, they're surprisingly adept swimmers here's a question from the might of gabora in the egg reverie zone the timer keeps changing and occasionally gets screwed up is the realm slash zone they're in a place where the concept of time is messed up which is being reflected by the timer I, this you could so, read it this question was formatted weird sorry about that <laughs> i get the point and i think you could interpret it that way uh, another way is that you're within some kind of giant phantom construction by the phantom ruby, and therefore things don't quite make sense because it's a incomplete illusion. I, I think the whole point is that it's supposed to be kind of messed up weirdo dimension. All right. Here's a question from Gab Sam. I was wondering, what does it mean with she's all over the place when describing Amy? Uh, this was brought up... God, was it this year or earlier? We've gone through so many questions. Yeah. Uh, Discussing how Amy's characterization has been handled over the years and just how incongruous it can be. Like you have SA1 and SA2 where she's, you know, kind of the smitten cling on wannabe girlfriend, but she's also dedicated and heroic. And that scene in the prison cell, I'm, going to read as kind of flirty and fun instead of 
kind of creepy, which is where heroes and battle start to take things where she is so obsessed with Sonic and perfecting herself for him that she's literally working herself to a delirious state or trying to mug him and force him into marriage. And then we get to forces where she's now part of the administration of a war effort. And it it's not as consistent as say knuckles who is stoic right or sonic who he you can argue that there is some degree of characterization shifting from dreamcast era to present but he's always that upbeat energetic kind of snarky hero uh we've it, tails kind of suffers from this too you know, he had a big heroic arc in SA1 and SA2, and then he declined into forces. Yeah. So it's not just Amy in this regard, but, you know, Amy fans are passionate about the character and they don't want to hear ill spoken of her. I get that. But I critique out of love. I want her to have a solid characterization, a solid direction, and a positive image within the franchise. Yeah, Heroes comes across to me as, like, they were trying to force a reason for a motivation for her. Like, they couldn't come up with a better one, so they just kind of stuffed that in there. And also, they had the same template to follow for every team, so, you know, it just kind of ends up being like, okay, well, how do we make these characters fit this basic storyline going throughout the game, like, going through an excuse to fight each team through each story is kind of where I feel like it came, that came from. It was just not handled particularly well. So Heroes really isn't the kind of game you play for the story, but I still like Heroes. I'm weird like that, though. Soundtrack's amazing. Here's a question from Major Bunny 3 Just curious, but since Sonic birthdays tend to be whenever their first game appearance is... Does that mean that the IDW characters' birthdays are when their first issue was? I.e. Tangle's birthday would be April 25th, since that's when issue 4 came out. Or is that something Sega has to decide and finalize? I don't think those are official birthdays at all. I think that's just kind of a kind of collective, let's all agree, this makes sense. So <laughs> do, year, do years exist in Sonic? No. Uh, let's <laughs> let us not open that can of worms. <laughs> Do calendars exist in Sonic? Probably not, because <laughs> nobody ages. But I mean, I think that's a perfectly fine way to interpret it until something else comes out to officially co- counter it. Yeah. Like, it's like if if Tangle were to appear in a mainline game, if she isn't appearing in Frontiers, that's not a spoiler or a hint or anything. No hashtag, no smile oh. here. Settle down. Uh. Settle down. If she were to appear in a future title, would you count that as her birthday in like the official line of games or do you count it as her first appearance in the franchise? You know, so ultimately I feel like it's personal preference. So you celebrate whatever you want, whenever you want and more power to you. We don't even know how long years are in Sonic's universe on his terminal on the earth planet, the earth of Sonic's universe, Sonic's sonic's world there we go we're just gonna go back to that <laughs> how long are years on sonic's world like is it is 15 years of in sonic's world the same as 15 years in our own i don't know maybe maybe not very well couldn't be not <sighs> oh well just gotta know when what day to give tangle a cake i guess yeah which i mean for her is probably Every day, although do you really want to give her any <laughs> cake though? Because she's already bouncing off the walls like crazy as it is. So eh, she burns off the sugar energy. That's true. It's true. All right. <laughs> Here's a question from Hedge. That reminds me. I don't know what <laughs> reminded them, but <laughs> one thing I've been curious about in the half decade since Forces hype cir- hype cycle is when the four prequel comics were written. How much of the game had been written by that point? As far as I'm aware, the game story was done, or at least as far as production of it was done. And you were not given it, right? No. no. I was given direction on the scripts for the comics. Yes. But I was not privy to the main story for that project. Mm-hmm. 
if you were, you might have had some words for it. <laughs> uh, well, here's one from Alex Arts here. In issue number 50, why did you decide to have Starline pilot the Super Egg Robo into the battle against the Egg Emperor? What reasons do you think Starline may have had for choosing it within the story? Was there an intended sense of irony in Eggman being defeated by a robot made to resemble him? Or was Starline simply being pragmatic by going for the latest available model that was in the Memorial Garage? Uh, out of continuity, it was to have a thematic, you know, battle of Eggman's legacy. These are Eggman's creations, and Starline is, to a degree, a creation of Eggman, and how that selfishness and violence comes back to haunt him. Uh, also, they were two very different but very iconic egg machines. I wasn't going to do Death Egg Robot again. I'm tired of that design. We've seen it a million times. But Egg Emperor and Super Egg Robo both have the motifs of the giant egg mecha, but are very clearly, distinctly, visually different. So you don't run the risk of having the Michael Bay Transformers thing, and there's a bunch of gears slapping into each other, and you can't tell what's the fight, what's going on in the fight. Also, I feel like they both have some of the more grandiose appearances. Like, the stuff out of Sonic Advanced is okay. I mean, the one out of Advanced one looks like a Rock'em Sock'em robot. It isn't very threatening, but... The one out of Lost World has a cape. It's a robot with a cape, Kyle. That's just fun. <laughs> you got it. And they had cape. very they had very different attack patterns, so it opened this up for opportunities for a more interesting fight. And I just I'm tired of seeing Egg Dragoon as well. Yeah. And I don't feel like that is iconically as Eggman as the other mechas. You know, sure, he's had it a lot. It's clearly an egg mech, but it's not Eggman. It's yeah. just one of his machines. The Egg Robo, the the Death Egg Robot, the Egg Emperor, those are all Eggman mechs, if you get me. Sure. As for Starline, it's, you know, whatever he had on hand to choose from, and because he is a bit Eggman-minded, he was going to default to that rather than something that's a little less ironic at the time. I am now inside you, Eggman. Oh, boy. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> and also, I don't care what Edna Mode says. Capes are cool. <laughs> she is wrong. Well, no, she's right, but they're still cool. I mean, yes, but they're still cool. Yes, you're right. You're right. She's wrong and right, but also wrong. Supernova Swirls has a question. Which Sonic characters would cry after watching Bambi? <laughs> They all would, but it's varying degrees of who would admit it. Uh, Sonic wouldn't cry. He's not allowed to. He, he would have that kind of quiet, thoughtful tear in the corner of your eye type of thing. No, no crying. Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shadow wordlessly gets up and heads for the door, and Sonic's like, where are you going? Shadow just turns and says, man is in the forest, but not for long. Oh, no. <laughs> Out of Starline feel. Well, nothing. He has no nerve endings anymore. Oh, you mean... <laughs> like, if, if he were, were alive um, at the time. Dude, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I think some Starline fans are, are kind of annoyed I, that I'm they sorry, constant, I'm sorry. constant jokes at him. It's like, uh, come on. Don't, don't dig it any further than we have to. I know, I know. It's silly. Know, it's the, silly. the joke it's, is as dead as he is. I get it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, he'd be into it. You know, the story of this up and coming youth who aspires to greatness and, you know, he would be hopping on his seat cheering during the fight with Brutus. He wants him to, you know, achieve and succeed, perhaps for all the wrong reasons, but yeah, he'd be into it. Yeah, but would he cry after if when Bambi's mom gets shot? Like, when, would he be sad about that? No. I didn't think so. I mean, <laughs> He, he would he'd be impatient after that point it's like okay now you get revenge now you build yourself up now you kit yourself out you sharpen those antlers you get revenge why is he not having revenge oh he's fighting brutus now now we're going somewhere all right this is the next step and then we go on the murder spree where's the murder spree <laughs> and then he's crying because of all the wasted potential he bambi could have just gone full bambo and just taken them all out coulda coulda shame he didn't <sighs> missed opportunity as always uh, 
I really don't want to think about it like Cream or Tails or anybody watching that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's heartbreaking. That's that's sad. Tangle. Oh, she's probably she'd probably be very sad, and then she'd immediately get over it because <laughs> that's what she do. Here's a question from the Marble Gardener. I grew up with Fleetway Sonic, and Amy was my favorite as a kid, so it was a little bit of a shock to see her other interpretations and the audience's general disdain towards her. When it comes to Amy's characterization, are Sonic Team slash Sega aware of how negatively Amy has been received by certain corners of the fandom? I don't want to speak for an entire company, but I feel like the sentiment is known to some. Yeah. Amy's characterization is very different in Fleetway compared to pretty much everything else. Well, a lot of stuff is very now. different. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, that's true. So, but I, I appreciate Amy's characterization in Fleetway. It's more, I don't know, more interesting to me than at least her interpretation at that time. So, luckily, she certainly had more agency. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> as in she actually had some. <laughs> I'm surprised they allowed her to go off model for so long. Never mind the upturned spines, but, you know, having the different outfit. Yeah. Wielding a crossbow. We never would have gotten away with that in Archie. Mm. It's weird. <laughs> it's kind of cool, actually. I like that. Yeah. Outfit. I like that outfit, too. It's cool. Yeah, it's a, it's a fun look for her. Yeah. Yeah, she's got the upturned spikes, too. Spines. It's a good look. Yeah, it's awesome. Here's a question from Robotnik Holmes. Quick, the IDW Sonicast are playing a match of Team Fortress 2 and 2 Fort on their PCs. Tangle, Whisper, and Jewel on Team Blue. The Bash Brothers, Rough and Tumble, Starline, Kit, and Surge on Team Red. Think they'll do the objective and work together as proper classes, or will they muck up, muck up and have everything end in failure? Mm, it's going to be a mess, for sure. I mean, why, Tangle's going to go... Why are there so many people on Team Red <laughs> compared to Team Blue? I mean, I guess Rough and Tumble only count as one, because they only have one <laughs> one brain cell to share between the two of them. And I guess Kit and Surge have are a package deal. It's kind of required. Okay, fine. Never mind. <laughs> I figured I mean, it out. You got Tangle playing Scout and Jewel playing Medic, but she can barely keep up with Tangle as she's flitting around the map. <laughs> That's the worst possible thing you can do, except Whisper's maining a sniper and nobody can get across the bridge or into the base. <laughs> Surgeon Kit had the exact same thing. She's playing Scout, he's playing Medic, so they just keep bouncing into Tangle and Jewel and not getting anywhere or doing anything productive. Mm -hmm. Rough and Tumble are constantly swapping between Demo Man and Soldier, arguing over which one's better and blowing each other up, launching each other out of the map. Mm -hmm. And Starline built his NG base and he refuses to move. He has turtled, and if he moves, somebody might blow it up. He has to be there to maintain it. No yes. one can get to the intelligence. He's fine. You go do your job. He's doing his. <laughs> He's just sitting there strumming that acoustic guitar. <laughs> this is like the most terrible game of Team Fortress 2. <laughs> On both there we go. Sides. We can get worse by saying it's a, it's a Highlander match where there's only one of each class oh no oh no so rough and tumble are arguing who plays heavy and they never actually get into the match <laughs> wait are they arguing over who's plays heavy or soldier or demo man or all three <laughs> it, it kind of goes in a circle right okay <laughs> fine you can play heavy i'm gonna move over to soldier why wait why are you moving on soldier? because well, he can shoot and he can rocket jump well then i'm gonna be him you were gonna be heavy i don't want to be heavy no more <laughs> because and so on and so him. forth yeah yeah <laughs> yes yes i like it all right here's a question from off through some sort of plot contrivance shenanigans starline meets eggman nega how does he feel about eggman's more serious descendant does he see him as the eggman he wishes eggman could be at first but then eggman nega has a pensions for wanting to burn everything down when he doesn't get his way it's a more extreme petulance than regular old vanilla eggman and that short-sightedness i think would turn starline off it's like you have future tech you have the foresight and the perspective of someone from the future 
and yet your reaction is to just burn it all down. You know, destructive eyes, sure, that's grand and all, but there's no purpose to it. There's no greater structure. It's just rocks fall, everyone dies. That's lazy. You know, Eggman can have his foibles, but it's always some kind of, you know, this is my last ditch attempt to salvage or here I am coming back again. It's not just wah, I lose. So you lose too. Rocks fall. Everyone dies, huh? Oh Lord. <laughs> You've done it again. You I didn't even... mean to do it that time. I was trying to be good. Uh, well, you know, it was a D and D thing. I mean it. I know that one's been getting thrown around a lot. actually, you know, kind of like toothpaste snively used to be. Oh, well, you guys have your fun. Speaking of fun, we have one last question from Joey the Sonic fan. I assume he likes to have fun because he's a Sonic fan, right? That's what we do as Sonic fans. Have fun, right? Sometimes I wonder. Anyway. Ian, I have a question about one of the NURB Freedom Fighters. What powers or skills do they have? Does the NURB with the blue spiky hair have super speed like Sonic? Pretty much. The Freedom Fighter NURBs were all meant to be lampoons of the Satyam cast with comparable abilities. Mm -hmm. I mean, the nerves are jokes when you get down to it. So it was just going to be a jokey, silly time. Yes. They are kind of like, uh, rabbits. (sighs) I mean, I really hate is you're not wrong. I mean, you're, yeah, I was going to say, you're not arguing that point. So I think I'm onto something. (laughs) Uh, sorry i mean at least you didn't invent the nerbs for what that's worth you kind of inherited that whole thing really i'm gonna lay this at john gray's feet because he put the idea in my head let's bring back the nerbs i'm like no john and he would bring it up like every week as a joke to torment me because he knew what reaction would get out of me he enjoys the sound of my teeth grinding and then eventually the neuron fired and it's like how would i do it it's like Damn it. It's now just, I have an idea. Just blame everything on John Gray. First the slap, now the nerves. <laughs> <laughs> Next to blame him for Mama Robotnik and for Bivalve. Actually, no, we, we already blame him for those, as mm-hmm. we rightfully should. And I think he would gladly take credit for those. Although Bivalve was inspired. That was a great running. I game. mean, that is very funny, yes. <laughs> Bringing back Bivalve. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> it actually had to make me look up who bivalve was because i did not remember <laughs> in the slightest it's like i barely remember the 40 fathoms freedom fighters and it's like oh okay that guy uh that clam i don't know <laughs> i have no idea the long con that i don't think we ever would have followed up on Mm -hmm. But it was just kind of my back pocket of if we ever had time to do this joke, it'd be that the bivalve of the 40 Fathom Freedom Fighters was the one good one. The rest were all part of a collective hive mind that all served a giant evil bivalve called Mother of Pearl. Yeah. (laughs) Mother of Pearl. Mm. And that, that, that is a code pun reference. Mind you, it would be a giant cybernetic clam running on Pearl script. Mm. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, man, you've that's like several levels deep on that one. That's wow. 40 fathoms even. <laughs> you know what? I got to get out of here. You got to take a break? We need to take a break. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll let you catch your breath and then we'll come back with more Bumblecast. <laughs> And we are back, and we're getting into the Twitter side of things, starting off with this question from El Train Boy. I'm curious, Mr. Flynn, what voice of Sonic do you hear in your head while writing him? Has it changed over time? Does it change from book to book? Does it just change on a dime? The best. Thanks. This, Thank you. This is one of our earliest questions, actually. Like, very early. May, might even be the first episode. I'm not sure. But, oh, geez. yeah, it's, I mean, it's been seven years, so I figured, you know, we could revisit this one. <laughs> see, see better if late the, than never. See if things have changed. Well, no, no, no. I mean, we an- the, you answered this question within in like the first episode. Oh, yeah, but that I'm, that was 
ages ago. I'm just wondering if something but is not from any trained boy. If anything has changed. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. I've, here I thought we made him wait seven years. No, <laughs> no, no, no. It's just this was one of our earliest questions. So I see. I see. Okay. Yes. I don't remember what I said back then. So, you know, have fun going back and comparing notes. I Right now, I kind of hear Roger Craig Smith ish. Um, all of them are going to have some degree of my own voice in there because I'm kind of mentally play acting them to find the right cadence or how it should be delivered. But the current voice cast does still greatly inform how I render stuff. I, I'm basically thinking, how would this sound if they were reading it? Mm-hmm. And if it doesn't sound quite right in my head, then it's like, yeah, let, let's tweak it. Let's change it. That's not too far off from what you said originally okay was there you go pretty much you hear roger's voice for sonic haha i'm consistent yep although In one thing i figured it was I'm trying to remember if he said anything about classic sonic was like different or do you just hear roger for him too <laughs> no i don't have really much of a defined voice for that because the classic sonic of now is not jillio white's sonic not really no it's a different character. He did a great job back in the day. It ages really well. Yeah. Like remarkably well. But that's not the Sonic that we have today with classic Sonic. So I I don't hear anyone's voice in particular with them. Mm. Yeah, you, you did mention a little bit of Ryan Drummond. Like he had like a, you, you said he had a mix, kind of a mix in your head of the major voices, but it was mostly Roger. So, hey consistency <laughs> of course now it from what very 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 little i've heard from frontiers it sounds like roger's doing a different kind of performance for sonic so we'll see where that takes us mm, should be fascinating what about uh ben from the movie i just i just i literally just hear dewey i can't i can't unhear i can't unhear dewey I, it's it's impossible now there especially in sonic 2 yeah. there's some moments where it's like that's dewey yeah pretty much but no he's he does a perfectly good job with that incarnation of sonic but movie sonic is so divorced from modern sonic i don't conflate the two yeah yeah he's definitely a different he's the same character but he has a different demeanor it's just mm-hmm. something different about him. He, he's much more childlike. He's more innocent. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. He's more earnest. Yes. Even though he doesn't say, know what I mean, Vern? <sighs> Here's one from the duck dealer. Would an EMP render surgeon kids augmentations worthless? I looked this up because I'm like, could internalized electrics be knocked out by an EMP or does all that meet? protected and no like an emp could knock out a pacemaker if it's strong enough uh yeah which is terrifying i didn't know that so Uh yeah they would be uh knocked out maybe maybe starline thought ahead and found some way of shielding them from that Mm -hmm. but uh in theory yeah it could knock them out oh yeah yeah an emp in real life would be catastrophic so that's a fun thought that's part of what made the raw moon arc so freaking horrifying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Here's one from Zarek. So, Omega wants to destroy all Eggman's robots, right? What do you think the situation would be if he came across Gemeral? Friendly tussle or flat out try to destroy him? You need to go pick up the Sonic the Hedgehog annual number 2022 and get that answered directly. Ha <laughs> ha. Nice. Little promo in there. Throw a little promo in there, yeah. Aggressively mediocre as a question. Would it be possible to make some sort of list of series Kyle and Ian are most able to talk about? Something like that would make it easier to ask about non-Sonic series without worrying about whether you guys even know anything about the series in question. Ah, uh, that would require us to make a comprehensive list of everything we have seen and remember. Well, and... not necessarily. Like, there's some of the major franchises that we I guess talk maybe. about. I, I mean, there's ways we could do it, but mm. I I mean I get the point of that. Right. Certainly. Right. And nobody wants their question to be here, I'm expecting a fun answer and we're like, uh yeah, but I appreciate I appreciate that thought too. It's like uh, I get it. I also I also don't want to limit folks like you must ask about this list 
and this list only. These are the only things, these are the only media we have ever consumed, and you may only ask about these things <laughs> if you think to reference the list. Yeah, which and most then, people you know, wouldn't. <laughs> And then I also don't want folks to see a list and go, oh, this thing I liked isn't on there. Therefore, they haven't seen it when it may be. We just didn't think of it. Right. Something like that. Just the other just the other episode. We were talking about a topic and you brought up Avatar. And I'm like, oh, yeah. How did I not think of that? Mm -hmm. So I understand where you're coming from on that idea. But I feel like it would ultimately cause more trouble than it would solve. Yeah, I agree kind of agree with that uh, on, on one hand and i do i empathize with you know you know suddenly maybe getting your question answered Ooh, yay and then you hear it and the answer is like oh yeah we have no idea yeah. sorry about that but I, I mean i guess if there's enough demand we could come up with something but sure if you think we're wrong and you think that's a good idea comment in the comments below and let us know tell us you want the list and uh you know, if there's enough folks who say that's a good idea who are we to argue? <laughs> we can go over it. Yeah. I mean, there's services like Tracked TV and stuff where you can basically put in the list of everything you've ever seen and share that with people. But that still is going to take some amount of effort on our part. So, eh. But, yeah, we'll see. Here's a question from Bowser Studios. Weird question. But has Sega given any information about Sega Sonic Cosmo Fighter's canonicity? And if so, are you allowed to reveal that info? I don't believe they've brought it up specifically, but I'm pretty safe to assume it's not part of the list. Are you telling me that Sega Sonic Popcorn Shop is also not canon? No. Oh, why not? It should be. What about Waku Waku Sonic Patrol Car? No. No? No. Sonic's not a cop? No, oh, very much not. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I guess that's good. <laughs> Although some now, people I can imagine are... movies like running around making siren noises. <laughs> well, I but mean, beyond that, that, there's plenty of people that seem to expect people to or expect Sonic to throw his enemies in jail at this point, though. So maybe he should be a cop. I don't know. Uh, I am so hurt by. Sega Sonic Popcorn Shop not being canon, though. That, that hurts me deeply. It's, You'll survive. It's I literally in, in Sonic Mania. Like, how could you do this to me? It's an homage. Yes, I know. It has to, An homage means that thing has to ex previously exist for it to be an homage. Uh, it's like, it's uh, a metacontextual. You're metacontextual? I don't even know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> but what i do know is that fair guy has a question since idw has a habit of picking up old continuities has an archery revival been brought up at all that might be a two birds one stone scenario that should benefit all plus have two enjoyable series running alongside each other nothing that i've heard of within the near future um if IDW were to pick up like reprint rights, maybe but I Archie Sonic's not coming back. That continuity is done. I am certain of that. Yeah. Unfortunately, here's a question from Tony C. Were team dark working for gun during episode shadow because they were working for someone. I have no idea. Maybe it was voice changed Eggman from Sonic heroes. Brought him back. <laughs> I, I remember asking, you know, where's Rouge sending her orders from? Why? Who is she working with? And they just said, put her in an office. Or, no, I didn't get direction. I just put her in an office and waited for a correction. And that's what got in. <sighs> Fine. Juice to it, boy, has a question. Is it really necessary to kill off most beloved characters like Sally? When literally she just appeared in one TV show and the comics? She didn't get killed off. I don't know where this is. I don't know what you want from me. That happened once, but then they brought her back because they realized that was a stupid idea. And this was before Ian's time. So, yeah. Getting roboticized are, is not the equivalent to death. It is reversible. Like, are we talking end game era? Are we talking robotization? Are we talking about the end of the Freedom Fighters? I, I, maybe talking about the 
run up to Sonic Genesis where he went blam, 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 and then had a four month break where people were like, is Sally really dead? And then the first issue back, you rewound time and she was fine. Yeah, well, that's what happens when you have a mega <laughs> point in the story planned and then the editor says, hey, we're taking four months off to do something unrelated. Yeah. Keep the momentum up. You come up with ideas that you don't necessarily agree with, but you do them because you gotta. <sighs> well, I don't know. Maybe next time you can actually go to Sally's house and just murder her. In no. Real, in real life. There you go. Take care of that problem. I'm trying to get him. <laughs> I'm trying to get him back, Kyle. I'm not trying to kill him off. I know. I know. I'm. <laughs> I'm just poking the hornet's nest. It's fine, right? The I'm... hornets are agitated enough as it is. Leave them alone. <laughs> I mean, the hornets are always agitated, though. I mean, what's the big deal? <sighs> I really hope the Freedom Fighters do come back. That would be good. That would be very good. Here's one from Andrew. If Silver traveled back further into the past to when Classic Sonic was around pre-Generations split, would Silver have his normal design, or would he be classified classicified, or something like that? Well, in Forces, uh, I would say Generations, but that's all kind of timey-wimey, wibbly-wobbly anyway. Mm -hmm. So we'll go with Forces. And Classic Sonic moved forward in time to the modern era, and he stayed classic. Yeah. So presumably... It works in the reverse. A modern character going back in time to the classic era would stay modern designed. That would be weird, but sure. Mm -hmm. Up the argument I'm seeing in the chat is that uh, classic Sonic became 3D. Are you forgetting the title screen to Sonic 3 where Sonic was 3D or the title mm -hmm. screen or the whole game of Sonic 3D Blast where Sonic was 3D? Never mind running around in three dimensions on that sphere. Mm-hmm. Sonic knows, but Sonic knew about the third dimension back then. Didn't use it all the time, but he knew about it. It's faster to go in two dimensions. It is. It really, truly is. Easier, too. And we got a question here from the RD Phoenix. Did Cream's ability to communicate with the Chow come to her naturally, or was she taught it through school or a certain book? Can her mother, Vanilla, also understand the Chow language? Those are very good questions, and I would like to know the answer myself. Me, um, me too. I would imagine Vanilla can, cause, but we haven't really seen her interact with the Chow in anything beyond like the comics all that much. So it could be just that you know she grew up with Cheese and therefore learned from there. Maybe they have a special bond. I don't know. I would. I would. There's some directions I would like to take that, but I don't know officially how that works. I'd like to know. Here's a question from Cloudy J. Since you're both fans of Mega Man X, what do you think of slash interpret the dynamic between X and Zero compared to Rock and Proto Man? Night and day. They're completely different. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, like, it, it, Proto Man's a bit more antagonistic to Rock. Not like evil, but, you know, seems to kind of... A trifle caustic, but yeah. there's an estrangement there. Right. And a degree of mutual understanding and... If the book had continued, I would have liked to have had uh, Blues in this kind of self-war over, he's the big brother. He should kind of look after his little brother. It's not his fault that Light made them the way he did. But there's still that little bit of bitterness in there, so he doesn't really want to get too attached. And he's being all angsty and complicated. And Brock's like, hi, how you been? Uh, <laughs> not that simplistic. I'm being silly don't at me uh for x and zero there's a whole different arc there oh absolutely like zero is this almost kind of low-level mythical figure in the hunters because he was some weird old tech robot that managed to stand his ground against freaking sigma with a pipe and then you know he gets brained and comes back as oh yeah i'm a chill dude who just is like a killing machine what of it <laughs> what's great Whereas, about zero <laughs> <laughs> and then you have x who is a pacifist he doesn't want to fight and he's kind of crippled by the options before them which are all of them and then having to pick up the buster and go in to fight in a war that he doesn't want to fight and his 
gradual ascent from a you know low level hunter to one of the premier hunters and zero watching this figure come up in their camaraderie that uh is formed that bond that is forged in fire and the multiple brushes with death mm-hmm. that they come out on the other side with they they are a duo well unlike rock and blues rock and blues are kind of estranged brothers x and zero are brothers in arms they are much i mean closer knit arguably even closer than that i mean there's gotta be yeah. there's, there's gotta there's gotta be a bit of irony that uh the reploid for lack of a better term that wiley designed to counter lights reploid it, it's gotta be a bit of irony that they're practically just lovers <laughs> 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 I mean, there there are some scenes where it's like yeah you may be reading into it and others where it's like no that that's pretty blatant no no yeah it's it, it, it comes across pretty obviously sometimes <laughs> it's not yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not it's not subtle it's not subtle. sorry alia sorry layer it's it's not happening yeah. yeah but there's there's a trust there between them that goes way deeper than what rock and blues has and x grappling with his existential trauma from game to game and zero kind of being steadfast in just who he is right would have been fascinating to play with mm. but we never got there but yeah they're, they're holy me. wholly separate pairings like the oh yeah only correlations are absolute surface level <laughs> the color schemes maybe <laughs> <laughs> maybe <laughs> Uh, still a great both of them are great though like it, i love the dynamics between both pairs oh yeah but they are very different yeah here's a question from kj i have a question about sonic mega drive since part two ended on the note that the heroes have to get the emerald are you able to share any ideas or concepts that were planned for the special stage in the comic if there were any Ah, uh, yeah i'm sure it's safe at this point part three would have started off with them entering the special zone and going for all the emeralds we we were going to fast track it because you don't want to do the traditional enter a zone exit a zone enter a zone exit a zone that that doesn't work for the story oh wait never, never mind sorry and they were designed largely in mind of what if this were a game with multiplayer how would different characters help you get past certain uh traps or hazards with a lot of visual cues from the previous special zones all kind of mixed together. I was wondering if they're going to be unique or would it going to be a particular incarnation of them or would it be some sort of amalgamation? Sounds like that. <laughs> yeah. And then once they got all the emeralds, then they would go to the last stage and get to the final boss and we get our supersonic fight and yada, 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 yada. Of course, you got to have your supersonic fight. It's important. It's the most important part. And we got a question here from Mr. Chad Energy. How come in the Encyclopedia, Lego Dimensions wasn't in the crossover section? I can't remember if there was a rights issue or something. Like we couldn't reference Lego or if I'm misremembering. It's a little weird that it's like it can't reference certain things. It's like it's it's just a book of with things in it. Like it's yeah. so weird. Like, this happened. It's like, okay, well, I guess we pretend it didn't. And like the Smash Brothers stuff, we had to walk a very, very fine line to just talk about Sonic stuff. Yeah, also very weird. Were you, I don't, I don't, I haven't seen the Encyclopedia myself, but were you even able to mention Smash Brothers by name or? I think so. Yeah. Okay. I'm pretty sure we could. And. But you couldn't mention anything might... else about it. <laughs> yeah. I think it, it's been a long time since I went through that book and that was a lot of stuff to juggle with. Yeah. Book. Yeah. And then things got through that people are still throwing around as uh, proof that you don't know what you're doing or what you're talking about. So, oh, well, <laughs> oh, well, here's a question from Brett. I realized recently how much Eggman has changed. Even in the time you've been writing him, he was once scary and sinister, but now he's kind of silly and unhinged. Is this part of a directive to make him more all ages friendly? No, and I'd still say he's pretty darn sinister. 
But he is also pretty silly and unhinged. It's just kind of a thing he's always been. Yeah, I mean, I you compare him to like early, I don't know, set AM era stuff. But right. I mean, he I really don't know how to tackle it because I I don't agree. <laughs> <laughs> I just I don't see it that way. But there hasn't been any directive to make him more palatable. No, it's Eggman is Eggman. I mean, he created a virus that spreads through touch that turns everybody into brainless metal zombies. Like that's that's pretty rough, man. That's and pretty people were dangerous. Going, people are going nuts over the fight with Starline. And just that scene as he emerges from the cockpit and the light reflects off his glasses sinisterly. Yeah. And, and then he just completely bodies him. It's Yeah. <laughs> he's fearsome. Yeah. He's he's just he does it with a smile. He's kind of, he's a goofball, yes, but he's uh I mean, he can still be a goofball and a uh a frightening, terrible person who's truly to paraphr- evil. To paraphrase Megamind, it's all about presentation. Exactly. Exactly. All right, and our last question this week comes to us courtesy of Wispo SFW. Hi, Ian. Is there a possibility of us seeing a Sprite cameo in the comics? I heard it's Whisper's favorite soda. Thanks. Kyle, am I missing out on a meme again? <laughs> I actually am I the old man? I don't actually know. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure. Like, is this like a, a surge re- a reference? <laughs> Like, my knee-jerk reaction was, oh, the Chow stand-ins in Sonic Boom in that one game. Yeah. And it's a drink, and it's like, oh, you mean the actual drink Sprite? Yeah. And it's like, there, there's, I'm not in all the Sonic circles. It's a very complicated Venn diagram. I am not in all the overlaps. Yeah. So please, think of a witty reply and entertain yourself with that one, because I have failed. <laughs> I have no clue. I don't know what they're referring to. Does Whisper even drink soda? Is this a no. thing? No. Because no, absolutely not. Because you know, you open it up, it gives away your position. That's yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's true. If you don't drink it fast enough, it gets warm and that's nasty. But then if you chug it, you know, you're lining up a shot and then and you miss your shot. So <laughs> no. 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 Sodas no. are not the drinks of snipers. <laughs> Uh, the only pop she has is the one you hear before you fall. Uh huh. Uh huh. As you should. <laughs> uh. All right. That's enough. We're done. We got yep. one last thing to do. Yep. We got to give a big thank you to all our patrons over at patreoncom slash bumblecast kofi.com slash bumblecast and our YouTube members. Just an incredible list of people. Thank you so much for your continued support. It's very much appreciated. And, uh, yeah, it's through your support that keeps us going and keeps the show going. So thank you. Yep, yep. That's going to wrap us up for this week. We'll see you next week for the regularly scheduled stuff and a whole bunch of Bumblecast minis. So look forward to that. All right. That's it. See you guys then. Be good to yourselves and good to each other. Maybe. Think about it. Try to. I guess. Maybe? Ian? Where'd you go? I'm scared. I'm alone now. The show is done. Back it up. (laughs) Move it out. (laughs) Evil Bumblecast says, be bad to yourselves and be bad to each other. (laughs) And we'll see you never. Boo this man. Boo. (laughs) I remember telling that to the crew at a convention and they all just freaking exploded laughing i mean i'm laughing <laughs> it's not hard to get me to laugh to be fair but <laughs> mm. <laughs> i mean that's a terrible but great oh, it's awful it's awful but it's hilarious and it's great but it's in theme you it, can't it, tell me that it, wouldn't fit absolutely would it absolutely 100 percent would you are not wrong in the slightest <sighs> and I hate that I'm saying that. <laughs> anyway, what's up, Ian? Uh, not too much. I just let's let's do a thing. It's been a while. <laughs> no, it hasn't. <laughs> uh, and it never will be again. 
for the no, rest of our lives. For the rest of our lives, you will we, you will have to deal with me. <sighs> it's been a while since I had a break from this, and it's been a while <laughs> where I wasn't questioned. Uh, yeah, yeah, probably since your career began. <laughs> <sighs> And then Rayman is a guest in his own game, or yeah. you know, in his own franchise. The rabbits have grown off into their own cancerous growth and uh. gained sentience. Ah, <laughs> uh, 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 the French. <laughs> Scruffy Matt, I'm not arguing that Mario Plus Rabbits is not a good game. Everything I've heard is that it's a spectacular XCOM thing. It's just it has rabbits, and therefore I am philosophically against it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. The game is not bad. It's the characters that are the problem. Who knows when I'll pick up Splatoon 3. Someday, maybe, after Splatoon 4 comes out. <laughs> if they don't replace the... A in Splatoon with the four, I'm going to uh, will not buy it out of principle because they no. completely missed the boat on replacing the double O's with the, mm. with a two in Splatoon two. Mm. Like what? What are they doing? Don't they know marketing? <sighs> Remember Drive Three or everybody mm. loved that. <laughs> <sighs> Fan four stick, yep. <laughs> You've been listening to the Bumblecast, a co-production of Bumble King Comics and the KNGI Network. Original theme music composed by Ken Coda Snyder. Remixed intro by T Lopes. Find out more information, along with podcast feeder links, MP3 downloads, and more at bumbleking.com and kngi.org. No, no, no. Don't change it. Just keep saying stuff. Sorry. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry. Uh, level check, level check, noise, 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 blippity bloppity, scoobity doobity, bip bub, shoobity bop, noise, noise, okay. nonsense word. I need you to like, get loud. Get loud. Okay. Damn it, Parker, I need pictures. Pictures of Spider Man on my desk right now. What are you doing there? Stop gawling at me. Yes, Gollum's a word, not hollygagging, not nukes hobble. I said get pictures. No, I'm not having a stroke. Get out there. Stop laughing, damn it, kid. Get out there. Okay. Why are you jumping out the window? Since when can you throw webbing like that? Damn it, where's Spider-Man when you need him? <laughs> okay. I think we're good. <laughs>